Season Zero! And we're ready to go. Season Zero, Fantasia Festival, interview day two. Much more quiet and relaxed and I'm sitting <laughs> with the director of the reconstruction of William Zero, Dan Bush. Thanks, nice, for, thanks nice, for having me. Yeah. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah, so yeah, nice you, to meet you too, man. You came here a couple years ago with The Signal, and that was a movie where three of you put your two cents in, and it was this one kind of interconnecting story. Exactly. This is my friend Marco Vaccaro, a fellow uh, Season Zero alumni who uh, runs a uh, podcast called The Blood Shack Rants, uh -huh. and he really, really digs your movie. Oh, fantastic. And he um, said, he's like, um, well, you can ask him about the short movie you see in the beginning that you think is the movie right. until you realize it's on the TV screen. Right, exactly. Okay, yeah, that short film was um, a little short film that was part of a, a 48-hour film project. And Jacob Gentry, the middle segment director of The Signal, he directed that. And uh, he and I were getting drunk one night at a bar. And we were like, how do we open up The Signal? And what are we going to do with it? And this is long before it got into Sundance or anything. And I was just like, uh, it was actually my idea. I was like, hey, why don't you take that little weird film you made since our movie's all about sort of a weird meta comment on violence. And in a weird way, that's... That his so was his little short film and I was like why don't we start it with that and then pull back to reveal it's on a TV so people think that they're up for like a you know an old school slasher okay and then and then they realize it's it's, it's actually you know so it's so it's this weird meta comment on violence yeah inside of another movie that's ultimately a comment on violence how did the three of you uh, decide what part of the movie you were going to do um and was it all I, written at once? And you're just like, dude, you're screwing my section. <laughs> there, yeah, there's yeah. so much. There's so much battling in that movie, but so also so much rewarding like uh, trust of each other that developed, and so much sort of help uh, and brothers brotherhood that developed. Okay. You know, I wanted the ending. I asked if I could take the ending specifically because I I really wanted to do some mind fuck stuff I wanted to really mess with the audience's heads a little bit I watched your reel on the way over here I'm aware that you <laughs> yeah. like to mind fuck I do I yeah. do <laughs> uh, I like to play with the audience as much as possible now you're on your own you're putting your balls out there reconstruction of William yeah. Zero for someone like me who hasn't seen it but will see it give us the reason to go man what is the uh world's, what is the worm on the fish hook I mean, uh, I, uh, world's first human clone okay there you go. How's that? Awesome. <laughs> I kind of made that up. But no, that's kind of <laughs> it. That's kind of it. All right. Um, yeah, and we talked about Mindfuck. Yeah. So it's a puzzle. It's a jigsaw puzzle. Like I said, my colleague Marco Vaccaro is, loves Mindfuck, so... Okay, cool. Yeah, that's good. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think Reconstruction William Zero, I, um, I, you know, I've been... After The Signal, we went in, out and we were, you know, sort of halfway welcomed into Hollywood after the signal we went and took meetings with all the big agents and they sort of ushered us into the, their offices and surrounded us and told us how derivative the signal was and we were like okay well why did you invite us then and right after the signal the crash happened so you know there was uh, the Lehman Brothers crash so all the money what is, what is the Lehman Brothers crash the Lehman Brothers crash just you know the whole the whole entire um, infrastructure of banking and the real estate money went away okay the crash the crash happened the crash okay. the crash happened and so all the dumb money that was in independent films dried up yeah. and you couldn't get real estate money to make independent films and um, so it ended up the, the three directors I being one of the three directors of the signal we all went out into the world and we were trying to get the next movie made and so like literally since the signal i've had about i've written seven screenplays with my buddy connell Byrne. yeah and we've tried to get several of them made and out of the frustration of trying to get funding and the funding is cast contingent and you get these big a-list actors attached to your movie okay. and then you're about to go do it but then they want to change in the script and there's all this nightmare things that happen and after years of that i finally said i'm just going to make a movie but by any means necessary, with any money I can f scrape up, and I made the, the reconstruction of William Zero. Okay, and so, how, how did this come to you? Um, Do you fear clones? <laughs> uh, no, you know, it's kind of a Frankenstein story. It's okay. kind of uh, got that quality. Yeah. I mean, anytime you have, you know, a creator of another being, you've mm. got a potential for, you know, a Frankenstein situation. So, yeah, so I don't know. I just We just went at it, and um, the first spark of the idea came from our, my co-writer, uh, Connell Byrne, who stars in the movie. He's absolutely fantastic um, so he threw out this idea and he usually does that throws out these really genius ideas and then I take them and try to make them as human as possible okay. and we write them together and it evolved you seem like a real team player uh, you can't make a movie by yourself but yeah I mean yeah. you know it's the, the reconstruction of William Zero is, a, is a, an effort that was made we were lucky to meet up with Amy Shea and Clay Florin and uh, our producer Alex Motlog and a lot of people came together and we were like yeah we don't have enough money to make this movie but let's make it anyway all right, so um, how did that... By any that, means necessary. Then, ha then what? Did you threaten people? 
Um, <laughs> bag, borrow, steal. <laughs> okay. You know, favors, friendships. Um, luckily in Atlanta, there's a real punk rock spirit behind filmmaking. Um, Got a lot of that punk rock spirit, man. Th- it's true. And, and, and when, you, when you raise a flag and you say, you know, let's charge the hill, certain, you know, contingencies in that town will, will fucking get behind you. Yeah. And we were lucky to have that. We were blessed to have that. So, And we were lucky to get um, some of the highlights. We got A.J. Bowen to be in it because yeah. he came back. We, I worked with him on The Signal. He's one of my good friends. And yeah. Amy Simons is lovely, and she's a force to be reckoned with. Um, she Oops. just, you know, commands the, the, the screen and everything. So besides the movies, uh, tell me something a little nerdy about yourself because that's, uh, that's the theme of the show. Oh, right. I've um, a show for Freaks made by Keeks. What's nerdy about myself? Um... I used to play, um, we, we invented our own Dungeons and Dragons game and played wow. it all the way through college. Okay. Uh, I, was the, I was the dungeon master and we threw all the books away and wrote our own. They, they did something like that on Parks and Rec, actually, where did the they? guy created a show, uh, game. Uh-huh. And then by the end of the season, for some reason, someone found it and were playing it. Oh, really? <laughs> and he had to prove <laughs> that it was his. That it was his by beating everybody. It was very amusing. <laughs> so, yeah, we did that. We used to actually, um, me and my buddies used to put on uh, Peter Gabriel's The, the Passion Okay. Uh, you know, based on the um, Last Temptation of Christ. Okay. Because it's such amazing cinematic music. Yeah. And we would play our own hyper version of this bizarro version of Dungeons and Dragons for days, and it was some of the best times I've ever had in my life. So. That's a beautiful thing, yeah. man. I wish I could find time to do something like that again. So, <laughs> you know, How? Just, just for a message for the youth of today, which uh-huh. I, I don't know if they'll fucking see this, but <laughs> if you do, don't grow up so fast. When you're 13, it's perfectly cool to spend a Saturday night with your friends playing video games or your made-up Dungeons and Dragons game. Don't run out and try to get drunk too early. You'll have the rest of your life to get drunk. Indeed. I've got one little story if you want to. Absolutely. Okay. So, all right. So, I knew that my days, uh, I knew I knew my innocence was over when we had set up, we used to play War in the Woods, you know, Vietnam War in the Woods when we were kids. Yeah. And uh, this huge, sprawling massive woods behind all the suburban houses in Charlotte, North Carolina. And me and my buddy Peter set up the best ambush in the world. We waited for about an hour for the other team to come along. And we were ready to jump out and uh, we heard them coming. We were like, why are they making so much damn noise? Don't they know that this is sacred? Like, they were coming into like enemy territory here. And when we jumped out to ambush them, they tumbled down the hill and fell in the creek laughing at us because they had gotten stoned for the first time. <laughs> And that was the end of War in the Woods. Okay. And it was also the end of my innocence. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a story. I'm just uh, a little bit about your Fantasia experience. Well, uh, this is actually my first time coming to, to Fantasia. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so this uh, is my first time here. So um, you don't know what it is. So oh, I, wow. I've been here for a few days. Have you seen movies? Yeah, I went and saw um, Mole Song. The energy at Fantasia is fantastic. I I, I don't know. It comes, it comes from a love of, of the genre, I think. Yeah. And... It's not so much of a celebrity-driven sort of... I, I don't know. There's, there's a more relaxed feel here, and Montreal is absolutely gorgeous. There's a, just a love of the, of the filmmaking and a love of the genre here that is, you know, unsurpassed. First time I ever came here, I was so surprised that I'm like, I make more noise here than I do at a Metallica concert. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you keep referencing punk oh, rock, yeah. man. I grew up listening to the Minutemen. There you go. So, like, what are yeah. bands are you into besides the Minutemen? Let's, get a, let's paint um, a picture. You know, I grew up listening to the Minor oh, yeah. Threat, the Minutemen. Growing up in the 80s in, in the Southeast, you're stranded between being a deadhead or a metalhead or a punk rock guy. <laughs> so I was I was stranded somewhere in between. Yeah, them. two of them I can understand, but the deadhead one is just like, just you not, know. Yeah. Well, you could be a cat, a dog, or hippopotamus. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hey, everyone, thanks for watching. Make sure in the future to look for the reconstruction of William Zero, clones, Frankenstein stuff. Very cool. Um, Dan Bush, thanks so much for talking with us today. Thanks, Ryan. And um, I don't know. I'm looking forward to your movie, man. I can't wait to uh, show it to you. Okay, and after it's all done, let's give each other a nice slow motion high five, okay? Uh, perfect. In fact, we could do it right now. Freeze frame. Season!